for culture applications. So I will show you a few electroculture applications, uh, but there are many, many more. You have, for example, the the paramagnetic energy round tower is that tower you see on, on the right, for example, uh, that you can build in gardens, but also in fields, in large fields, large fields. Um, you have also the atmospheric electric antenna. It's uh, like a huge pole with uh, wires on top of it. Uh, uh, and, and, and this is uh, also very useful to collect uh, electrical atmospheric energy and to, uh, and to communicate it to the soil and increase soil fertility like this. This can, you, you will see it's also very uh, useful uh, with huge effects on plant growth, very easy to install. Uh, there is also the cylindrical magnetic antenna uh that you will see that can increase local magnetic fields and um and also increase plant growth and you have uh, other techniques like uh, energizing or uh, uh, electrifying irrigation water and spray water or magnetizing it and this helps also a lot uh, the growing process you have also uh, 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 monuments or also uh, uh, systems like uh, antennas like in the form of a pyramid that can electromagnetically charge paramagnetic volcanic rock uh, dust or, or sand and also and then uh, you can transform uh, uh, a simple rock dust or sand in, in, a, in, 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 a, in a fertilizer in a real fertilizer but a fertilizer that works by transmitting that electrical charge or that electromagnetic energy uh, to the soil that helps plant growth. That's an example uh, among others. So here you see, uh, so first we will talk about the paramagnet en energy round tower. Uh, this is inspired from the round towers we find all over Ireland in Europe. Uh, you, you see there uh, round towers that uh, can that have a lot of similarities with uh, what you find in India, like uh, the stupa, the dagaba that Harsh, Harsha wa, wa, was telling about. Uh, there are a lot of similarities with the angle of the cone you see on top and things like that, and also the rocks and uh, maybe also the use of metals inside because you, you will find a lot of iron in that kind of tower. And um, and uh, it was discovered in the 40s by by uh, uh, Phil Callahan. Uh, it's an, uh, a researcher of radio waves. He discovered that those towers act like uh, like antennas and transmitters of uh, um, low frequency radio waves of the of the atmosphere of the, of the Earth. And uh, now, uh, today, we call them also the Schumann waves. And it was discovered that when those, those, um, uh, those natural uh, uh, radio waves uh, are amplified locally, that all plants grow a lot better. And so then we, we, we began to make uh, little towers uh, to, to, to copy this and make uh, little towers like you see in my garden or like uh, you see on that rock uh, below on bottom. Um, you can make this little or big. And, uh, and then you will see and, and put in the fields and it's made of certain rocks inside uh, that make it uh, working and also the hat with the special cone in the angle and also made of certain rocks and then it acts like that antenna and uh, and all plants will grow a lot better all around it's really working very well very easy to install uh, anywhere in the world because those electromagnetic uh, low frequency radio waves are very useful all over the world all plants and animals need also humans need those beneficial waves to to grow healthy and to stay healthy for example fr fr from where come those uh, radio waves so they come from thunder strikes every time you have uh, thunder in the world somewhere 
uh, it, it generates those uh, low frequency radio waves that will travel all over the world. And it's continuously, we, it's like a heartbeat of planet Earth. And, um, and so you have scientific articles that are talking about that. You, you see, uh, for example, that schematic with the frequencies like 7.83 hertz, 14.1, 20.3. So that, that's all uh, uh, the Schumann waves and those low frequency earth waves that are collected by those towers. An example you see here on, uh, on the bottom uh, below, uh, a little experiment everybody can uh, easily uh, try. It's uh, a little tower in a, in a pot with uh, uh, radishes. And you see on the left that the radishes uh, grow a lot bigger than at the right where the radishes uh, are still very little. Hmm. So it's very easy to, to test uh, when it works very well, you see that. And what are the effects or what can we, um, um, uh, um, what, what, what can we gain from those towers? So an example, it can increase the yields by 30 to 100%. Sometimes it doubles, sometimes it's only a few 10%, but uh, it can really increase the yield uh, dramatically. So increased resistance to stress, cold, heat, dry or wet conditions. So it's like the plants become more resistant to all uh, stress of the weather or extreme weather. And, and so that today it's uh, important because of uh, uh, when we speak about uh, climate change or, or problems in the climate uh, 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 that uh, create a lot of problems in agriculture uh, in Europe, probably also in your country, I don't know, but uh, it can help uh, very much the plant to resist. Um, also, the plant become more uh, resistant to pests and diseases in, 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 in general. So when they stay healthy, you need less pesticides uh, to treat uh, those pests and diseases. And when you use uh, a lot of electroculture techniques all together, then you, you will discover, you will observe that you have almost no pest and disease anymore. Um, now, you have to see that in each country too, huh? but it's, it's a general. general. Um, also, what is very, very interesting is that you have more nutrient content. The plants are growing bigger, better, more healthy, uh, but they have also more nutrient content, like 30 to 50% more. And in comparison with chemical uh, fertilizers, with chemical fertilizers, most cases, uh, the nutrient content is, uh, is, uh, is less. And, and with uh, electroculture techniques, uh, it's more. So it's only good for health and, and well-being of all the people that will feed uh, with those uh, very nutritious uh, uh, vegetables and plants. An example how to do, uh, you have, for example, here, um, uh, an example, in, it was in a field of a, of a vegetable grower, and you see a vegetable that is called uh, kohlrabi in, in, uh, in, uh, in Germany. And uh, you see in my hand on the on the right, it's a little kohlrabi and on the left, a big one. So the big one was all the kohlrabis that it, it corresponds with the size of the kohlrabis that were in a radius of 60 meters all around the tower that was around one meter 50 high. The size of the little kohlrabi was the kohlrabis that were uh, planted uh, that were are grown um, uh, further away of 60 meters. So th this gives you an idea that just a little tower like this with, uh, with the clay tubing uh, uh, have a huge effects on plant growth. Hmm. Another example, it's uh, of, 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 uh, of good friends and friends that have, um, that, that like to use those round towers. And they have uh, already three years in a row, they have the record of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the French record of the biggest um, sunflower. 
uh, in France. Uh, it's uh, from Richard uh, Ambert in the Vendée in France. He, he has huge, huge results in his garden with all those techniques. And you have also Mehdi Dao, it's a vegetable grower, and he has the record of the biggest uh, pumpkin in France uh, last year. So it's also with uh, the use of those towers and also other electroculture techniques. So you see, uh, and, and that all without any uh, chemical fertilizer or pesticides, it's only organic uh, growing techniques and uh, electroculture with it. Hmm.